All right, people are still jumping on. So rather than wasting too much time, we should get started. Can everyone see and hear me? I can see myself. Can everyone see and hear me? Drop a one, 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 one in the chat box. Good one. You know I had to get a first stream, bro. But yo, guys, uh, I ain't gonna spend too much time introducing myself. Um, day one, day two, absolute flames are dropped. Absolute. I can't even put into words the amount of value I've gained. My notebook is. My, my wrist is hurting from taking notes. But guys, if you've gained value from the past two days, remember, we're halfway through the boot camp. It's day three now. If you gained value from the boot camp, drop a fire emoji in, in the chat box. Someone said I got grandma glasses. I got taste. I see all the Android users there. Obviously, they don't have emojis, so they're having to type it out. If you're an Android user, get yourself an iPhone. <laughs> but, um... But guys, day number three, uh, numbers are still going up. Hopefully we max out a thousand. I appreciate you all jumping on. You know, I've gained tons of value. I hope you're gain, gaining tons of value as well. Um, I'm not going to introduce myself because, you know, you might catch me holding a session maybe in the next day or two. I'm not going to give away too many details. But guys, ah, I'm gassed. I'm excited. I'm pumped up. Um, I've been excited to do this. I've been excited to jump on, you know, seeing two days maxed out. I can see myself there and here, by the way, which is why I keep looking up. Um, it's weird seeing myself over there, but what, what, what can I say? Um, we jumped from, actually, first of all, let's give it back to Isan, Ashwin, Makan, and Kyle. They've done a crazy job. Drop a seven in the chat box if you appreciate what they've done, the amount of value they dropped, the nuggets they've dropped have been crazy. The chat box is popping off, popping off, popping off. All right, cool. Guys, we wasted too much time. We're, we're 10 minutes in. Um, let's get started. So at day one, we covered, we went back to the basics, you know. To become good at something, you have to go back to the beginning and, and, and learn the absolute basics to build your skill and become better at it. We had Ashwin then, then you know, come in, give an introduction into, into uh, institutional trading, smart money concepts, uh, very briefly running into, you know, how you can get more better risk-to-reward moves. Then we had Makan and Kyle yesterday briefly cover uh, stuff like fractals, date and time, and then um, uh, Wyckoff as well, briefly called Wyckoff. And now today, you're going to learn how to how to steal pips, right? You're going to learn how to steal pips from the man himself. Tell me about it. Yeah, you're going to learn how to how, how to steal the pips from the market, right? Now, I'm not actually holding a session myself today, bro. That's the, that's the sad part. Guys, I've been blessed to so I've edified this person. Honestly, the, the person I've gained a lot of value from, he's going to be taking host of the session today jumping onto charts and going in exactly, you know, how you can get the best uh, out of your trades. This person I've been blessed to learn a lot through. Um, I never knew this person before I got to know him through IM. Um, and honestly, the amount of value he's, he's dropped to me, the amount of knowledge he's dropped to me ha has been crazy. Um, you're going to see for yourself. I don't want to, you know, give away too much. I don't want to give away, you know, everything that he's going to do. I'll let him do that. But let me turn my camera off and I will work to introducing him when I can find him. Without further ado, actually guys, before I call him into the call, let's show him some love and appreciation. Let me just find him on the call. My laptop is bugging. Ah, okay, that's why he's not he's not working, is because he is. Bro, if you're on the call, raise your hand because I'm because I'm struggling to to find that. What's your name on this? Ah, okay, I found him, I found him. I found him. Right, go on. All right, guys, when you're ready, we're about to go into. Yeah, I found him. There we go. So, guys, Mr. Steal Your Pips, without further ado, I'm making you host, bro. You can share your screen. I'll stop sharing. And, bro, let's take it away. Let's, let's smash it. Numbers are still going up. We'll get a thousand. When you're ready, bro. Your host now, bro. Thank you so, so much for that introduction. And I'm not worthy of it, but. Hopefully, I'll try and give out a mad amount of value. Um, but one thing that I want to do is um, I'll make you host so that you, you, you can look over the chat and everything. But, um, but I'll share my screen and stuff here. Um, let me just enable that and make you host. Once again, do you want to raise your hand again so I can make you host? Someone saying face reveal. All right. If 
if I get 50 people on this call turning on the cameras, I'll turn on mine as well. The reason for this is, is because a lot of, um, like a lot of times, what may happen is that people, they'll be on a Zoom call, but they'll be doing other things on the side. But when I see everyone's got their cameras on, they're focusing, then I'll turn mine on as well, yeah? So guys, everyone turn on your, on your cameras so I can see who's actually serious about this and we'll take it from there. So Farhan, let me just make you um, host once again so that you can look after the, the chat and everything. Right, how many cameras do I see on? One, two. I see a lot of cameras on, but are they enough? Where's everyone at? TE, where are you at, guys? Come on, man. Type TE in the chat. Everyone, type in TE in the chat. Drop TE, 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 because we're all a part of TE. It's all about TE. TE is going global. I mean, we're already global, but TE to the moon. Trust me when I say this, that you guys underestimate the power of TE. Imagine on the first day, we barely even promoted the boot camp, but the boot camp got maxed out within seconds. Second day, boot camp got maxed out within minutes. Third day, boot camp even isn't maxed out. And the reason why I'm saying this is because I want you guys to understand that along the way, people are going to drop out. Same thing happens in business, yeah? People will join your business, but along the way, they're going to drop out. But you stick with the people who are serious. So those of you who are serious, you're all going to get the nuggets today, tomorrow, and on Friday. And the call on Friday is going to be maxed out only to 500 participants. So it's all down to you guys. The host has asked you to start your video. Your own one's not even on. How can I start my one? Turn yours on and I'll turn mine on. All right, now you guys have all seen me and I'm sure you've all taken your screenshots already, but now you all saw me, yeah? <laughs> all right, guys, now let me start sharing my screen and let's get straight to it. All right, so the topics that I'm going to be going over in this session, well, the chat's blowing up, um, but I can't take everyone's questions. If there's any serious question, then Farhan can um, unmute himself and ask. But, um, and ask on your behalf, but apart from that, I'll be going over the concepts which I'm here to teach. Now, um, obviously, everything that I, that I will be teaching today is not something that I've learned myself or made up myself. It's everything that I've learned from Go Live, from IEM, and through my own research, yeah? So, always, I have to throw it back, give it back to the trade house educators that have educated us on these concepts, on smart money concepts, on the contents which I am about to teach. So the topics that I'm going to be going over is um, divergence, the types of divergence, how you can use divergence to get sniper entries and as an extra confluence. And also I'll be going over the quarter theory. Now, what I want you guys to understand is that every single concept that is taught throughout this bootcamp, because this bootcamp is literally the breakdown of all the confluences you need to enter a trade. You don't enter a trade simply based on one of the concepts you enter with a confluence of all of them. That's why we're teaching all of them. Yeah. If if one if everyone was to be successful trading just one concept, then only that concept will, would be taught throughout. But every single time you enter a trade, it is important to make sure you've got your confluences on point, that you've got all your um, your confirmations set up. Now, one of the best websites, one of the best confirmation checklists that I've ever come across is on, on, on bullishrevolution.com and it is basically put together by Zach McDonald and what I advise everyone to do is basically get this confirmation checklist, download it and print off as many as you can so before you enter every trade you go through this confirmation checklist to make sure you're doing it right. Yeah, so um, if there's any concept over here that you don't understand or you want to learn more about, that's what this bootcamp is here for. Everything on this checklist has been taught or will be taught throughout this bootcamp. If you um, if you, you still want to learn more about them, you can just go and go live. You can go on, um, you, you can go into the academy and learn more and more and more about them, or you, you can just do your own research so that you can. So so after you've got all these confirmations put together and you go through every single one before entering a trade, your trades will bank. 
even if one doesn't bank, even if two don't bank, the amount that you win will start to increase. And because of your risk to reward, you'll start making money. So let me drop this link into the group chat. I mean, into the chat box. Everyone should bookmark it, download it as soon as possible. All right, I can't open the chat, but if someone else can just drop the link in the chat, um, I'll be really grateful. You can also drop the link for the website um, on which Zach Madonna has got his course. And um, of course, because it's updating right now, it's not on, but uh, the Wyckoff method itself is on. And for everyone who wants to learn Wyckoff, this is the best place for it. So as you saw on that confirmation checklist, there was also um, a couple of points that were basically, um, yeah, so a couple of points that were, so the, the core level theory is not on there, but hopefully you'll all understand exactly what it is. And I'll also be going over divergence on this call. So let me just get a blank chart. And what exactly is divergence? So divergence itself has two types, yeah? The way that I like to call them, or the way that I like to differentiate between them is that one is retail and one is institutional mm -hmm. concepts. So the retail type, um, what it's actually like, it doesn't actually have a name, but it's basically when you are comparing price and an oscillator, yeah? So the oscillator, I don't even know how to spell oscillator. Oscillator divergence. And then you have price divergence. And the reason why I want to explain both of them and make both of them clear to you is because sometimes you may you may come across divergence, the term divergence, but you won't see price divergence, you'll see oscillator, and you'll think, wait, I thought this is divergence. Yeah, but um, so to simply clear the confusion between both of them, I'll be teaching both of them, but I never used the oscillator divergence. I used to back when I got started and back in my retail days, back in the days of one to 0 0.5 risk to reward ratios. But now price divergence is what it's all about. But I still teach both so that you can gain an understanding. So oscillator divergence is, um, is when, oops, when there is divergence, between price and an oscillator, if that's how you spell it, and price divergence is when there is, so for those of you who don't understand the term divergence yet, don't worry, I will, I will be going into that and showing examples of it. Price. Mm -hmm. So this is not like a textbook de definition, it's basically in my own terms because um, one thing that I find is so true is that when you learn something from, um, that when you learn something and you put it in your own terms, that means you truly understand it. But if you learn something and you're trying to copy other people's terms, it means that you've simply learned it as a parrot question or something, yeah? So I want you guys to understand this as I go on and explain these, but don't just copy my words. Don't just take a note of these words, take a note of the concepts that I teach because that will help you guys make it uh, to put together a sentence with your own words that helps you understand it even better. So oscillator divergence when there's price, di uh, when, uh, when there's divergence between price and an oscillator. So what an oscillator actually is, is that it's a type of indicator when you come over to the indicator, for example, you've got the volume, in the, um, you've got the volume oscillator, you've also got the, Stochastic, the stochastic, you've also got um, RSI, and um, which is the relative strength, strength index. And one of my favorites for divergence is MACD. So these are basically the oscillators which you can use and, um, and basically use them to find divergence. Now, there's a certain template that I actually use um, of the multiplier strategy because back when I got started I was basically learning the multiplier strategy and trading the multiplier strategy and divergence is key in the multiplier strategy. So if I put on um, these in, these indicators and oscillators as you can see for the indicators we've got an EMA and MA 
and for oscillators we've got MAGT, Stochastic and Awesome Oscillator. I won't be going into this strategy too much, if you want to learn it, you can learn it from Go Live. but the only reason why I'm pulling it up and explaining it is just to show divergence and um, what it's all about. So what, so what, um, so what the retail uh, termed of divergence is when price is going in one way but the oscillator is going the other way yeah so what this basically means is that for example if you've got two points of um, a high and a low so let me mark up these two highs and what i normally do to mark them up is that i use a vertical line and i mark up the two points yeah so over here we've got price going up in one direction and let me just mark it up down here on the oscillator as well you can see that if you slap on a trend angle that price is going up and the oscillator okay this is not a good example because it's also going up by a bit my bad but let's try and find a better example and i'm sorry for my lack of preparation but i don't like to like come with pre-made examples so people may believe that oh, this only happens once in a while so that's why you have bought it up but look right here it's happened again yeah so over here i hope this one doesn't flop as well or oh, it's about to um perfect so we've got a perfect example down here yeah so over here we've got uh, um, one high over here and down here we've got another high so let's just use this one yeah so over here we've got two highs which come after each other and um, as you can see the trend angle from this high dropped down about minus 39 degrees the degrees are not important but i just like to um, show them as well and up here we've got an increase of 15. so it's more than double of the difference so that just shows that it's a powerful divergence according to the oscillator and that's why we saw a little drop off yeah but of, but of course, we know that with, this, with, with smart money concepts, we, um, we are able to use divergence to its true capacity with price divergence. Yeah, this was just to show you what, what the oscillator divergence actually is. So if a retail trader ever tells you, oh, I caught this many pips with divergence, this is what they are talking about. Yeah. So this is retail concept divergence. Now, if you want to learn about divergence, you can go over to Manny Kinyonas on Go Live and he's quite um he's um he, he goes quite deeply into um into divergence um with the oscillator and price now we've got price divergence itself price divergence is when you've got two pairs which are diverging with each other so to understand this what i want you guys to first understand is the correlation between pairs yeah so euro usd and gbp usd would correlate quite well because um because eur and gbp like they're quite close on the map anyways and um well they were within each other but let's not even speak about that but basically they they have a, a good impact on each other on each of the other currencies on each of the other currencies so we will see that they move in the same direction quite often yeah so normally you'll see the euro making um, higher highs then you will also see the pound making higher highs and vice versa yeah so gbp usd and euro usd they mainly correlate actually let me just type this up so you've got gbp usd and euro usd and you've also got AUD, USD and NZD, USD simply because they are also quite close um, on the map. You've also got, um, for example, gold and silver, XAU, USD and XAG, USD. So they also correlate quite well. And, um, and, and something that Wally once showed me, um, is really quite helpful for you to understand the correlations uh, let me just open up my fx book and uh, obviously it will go to the calculator because that's what I, what comes up a lot 
and you can go to the correlation yeah so so come out the market and click on correlation this will show you which pairs correlate the most with, with which pair so it's really really helpful for you to understand and this is what will help you with divergence with price divergence quite a lot because what price divergence actually is is that when for example one pair so if eu is is making a higher high and gu is making a lower high that means that the prices are diverging now i'll show you guys examples but what i want you guys to understand is that when correlating pairs diverge with, with each other that simply means that a massive move is about to come into play yeah so when gu and eu di diverge against each other that means that a massive move is about to come into play when au and nu are uh, are diverging then a massive move is about to come into place for either or both of them yeah so i'll show you guys exactly how to use divergence how to use price divergence so that you can catch these massive moves and you can see them coming before they even come yeah so let me just give you guys a quick example of where gu and eu were diverging because i've got um, eu on open already so so how you want to actually compare them so uh, before you would go on to indicators and add on an, an oscillator for your retail divergence but for the institutional kind of concepts you want to click on compare and then you go to add symbol you can overlay it on the same chart which you're on or you can have it pop up as a window below i normally prefer to have it um, pop up as a window and i want to use gb USD because that's what I'm comparing against Euro USD yeah so that now shows GBP USD right below here so over here I've got EU down here I've got GU let me just bring it up so you guys can see it more clearly and you can compare it better but as you can see wherever EU and GU had divergence a big move took place on either of them so let me mark up these highs so you, you can actually see what's going on so if i mark up for example this high to this high on eu and i do it down here as well you can see that price diverge um, had basically divergence yeah down here i mean up here on eu price moved up down here on gu price moved down so what that basically means is that there was divergence so when price is moving one way on one pair and with a pair that it correlates with is moving the other way that means a big move is about to take place and that's exactly what happened as you can see over here on eu price had a nice big drop off over here on gu it sort of uh, moved a bit sideways and then it dropped off big time so even if you got in for a sell over here with the stop loss at break even you would have caught this whole move down yeah so this just comes to show you the power of divergence that when there is divergence in the market big moves are coming but as i said divergence is only one confirmation what else do you guys see over here all right what else do you guys see on eu now i want you guys to answer in the chat box what do you see on eu Do you want to open up the chat box for a one? Thank you very much. So guys, what do you see over here on EU? Just before this divergence. Liquidity sweep. Liquidity sweep and Wyckoff. You're both right. You're both right. As I said, it's not only one confirmation. You get all the confirmations that you want. Over here, you've got equal highs yeah so over here we've got equal highs and this literally came up swept that liquidity done a stop hunt above this high as well and boom down it went yeah even if you couldn't have got an entry on that let me just take these off so you, you can see what's going on so actually let me just make it candlesticks real quick uh, so over here you can see that basically we had a little fu candle price went up and then dropped now because of that divergence you know that the drop's going to be big so even if you missed 
that first entry up here or, or whatever your entry was based on the based on previous price you can get in a re-entry and you can get re-entry after re-entry after re-entry yeah let me just show you guys what your entry would have been like off this um of this supply zone over here because we know that institutions got in half a bias yeah so if you had entered this right here stop loss right above that because you don't need nothing more and it went down a good 177 pips yeah let's say even if your target wasn't all the way down there because i'm not going to lie honestly my target wouldn't have been down there but even if it was just for this low down here because if you look on the daily time frame you can see the overall we've been in a massive downtrend we've been in a massive downtrend we've got an fu candle that basically means that price is going to drop big at least it's going to break that low yeah so price dropped big it broke that low and it went all the way down a good uh, few hundred pips all right so let's say even if our target was um 330 pips and not the four 430 let's say our target was just 330 pips that's a good one to 20 risk to reward now for those of you who know how i trade you'll be like that's cute yeah because if you go down to the smaller time frames you would have got a much smaller stop loss but let's save that for another day and let's save that for the people who know it a lot better than me for the people who are going to teach it a lot better than me and i'm just too excited i can't wait for that but over here that was one entry you, you could have taken and then as you can see price came back like after it broke structure like every time it broke structure came back retested you could have entered after price broke structure it came down below this low closed below this low it pulled back to that order block another entry because you know it's going to drop big you can enter on every single pullback as long as it matches your confirmations so that's basically the imbalance fill along with that order block and stop plus above there boom all the way down here next when did a uh, structure break it broke down here came back retested that imbalance i won't go down to the smaller time frame to see what exactly that entry was based on once again it came down broke structure came up to this order block um i won't go down to the smaller time frame to find out what that entry was based on but um if for example you just entered from that order block that would have been that much uh, a 30 pip stop loss not my cup of tea but yeah um those are like those are like the three entries you you could have got off that and the amount of time it went from the first entry to hit your target it took about a couple of months let's say yeah so about yeah so two months and one week so that's basically how long it would have taken for you to bag a 1 to 20 a 1 to 17.5 and a 1 to 7 all of them on one pair I've just shown you divergence between two pairs, but I've only showed you the entry of one of the pairs. Shall I go on to show you the entries of the other pair? Shall I go on to show you how much you could have made out of the other pair? If you guys want to see that, if you guys are excited for that, drop some ones in the chat, drop some fire in the chat. Come on, let's see this. I want some energy. Because back on the other calls, we have 1,000 people. On this call, we've only got 850, but I want to see the energy of 1,000 people so I can give you back that energy. Sorted, sorted. So let's get back to GU now, yeah? Let me just get rid of all of these. And let me pull up GU. So GU right here was also that divergence and the confirmations we had for that is that it took out the highs as well. As you can see over here, took out all these highs it came back all the way up here um, to 1.35 quarter level and I'll go over quarter levels as well and why um, sometimes it, it misses it by a little bit sometimes it hits it but divergence over here we had that divergence that divergence which I marked up but let me just get rid of that so I can show you exactly what your entries could have been on so as you could have seen from the top one from EU we entered based on the recess of an FU candle yeah 
So over here, we can see just from the line chart that this was a massive FU candle, shot all the way up and dropped down big time. Came down both structure, that means that we enter up on a retest, correct? So let's make, let me change this to candlesticks. I don't like the color of these candlesticks, but we got to do what we got to do. So as you can see over here, price done this massive FU candle. Let's see how big that move actually was about 500 pips in the space of eight hours. 500 pips in the space of eight hours, definitely the banks and, inst and institutions got in that. that. That's basically another confirmation that price is gonna, is gonna drop big, yeah? So imagine the banks invested in a 500 pip move for the buy to sell. How big would that sell be? Massive, isn't it? So what we can see over here is that we had this break structure down here, price came down and we got a retest. Price came back to retest this order block. Let's say if we don't even go down to the small time frames once again, but we only enter based on that order block. And for targets, oh, the risk to reward on this one's going to be dirty. For targets, we could have targeted down here or down here. Yeah. So let me just, let's say worst case scenario, these equal lows down here. Yeah. So that would have been a 1 to 40 from your first entry. Yeah. Price didn't actually come back and break structure again until price came down here. Yeah. A closure down below this low, this is where price broke structure. And um, as you can see, price came back up. It didn't exactly break the high. So even if you re-entered over there, you would have still been in from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But to be honest, for me, a 1 to 40 is decent, don't you think? A 1 to 40 is still decent because retail traders, they get a 1 to 2 and they get guessed. Yeah. So this top top, along with your trade on EU, I mean, yeah, on EU would have been nice for that. Like that would be enough for me. Even if you had entered over here, yeah. Like if you had got into this entry, my bad. If you had even entered on this order block, for example, when price broke structure down here, um, for those of you who may not be able to see it clearly, let me just go down. So as you can see, price came over here and it broke structure from this low, yeah? After price broke structure, if you go back in this retest from the supply zone, aka all the block, pretty much the risk to reward would have still been around the same. And it, and it would have, have hit your break even because price didn't even come back up that high. Actually, it may have for some people, but what I normally do is that I, is that I reduce my risk to that high, to above that high. So it, so it wouldn't have even hit my break even. Yeah. So that's a nice one to 38, one to 39. So this is one set of divergence and the amount of pips you could have caught the risk to reward on these trades that you could have caught from just two pairs with one set of divergence. Yeah. So that's one example of EU and GU diverging. If anyone's got any questions, drop them now quickly before I go on to the next one. How are you determining your stop? Because if you enter basically from a supply or demand zone from all the blocks, you just put your stop loss above or below that. In order for me to hold a trade that long, I would have to be in a coma. Once again, that's all, uh, that um, literally comes down to your mindset and stuff, to your um, to your self control, self discipline, and hopefully that will help you. Um, the thingy, the boot camp session tomorrow will help you on that because that's when we're going over psychology and mindset. What is an order block? Um, it's basically a footprint which you learn on um, on the how do I trade course. And it was explained in day one, 100%. Can you really quick go over the GU and EU divergence trades one more? Um, I'll basically do another one. So if you want to close the, the chat box again, you, you can do that to stop um, the spam. But normally you use a high time frame. Yes, I do. For for divergence, you want to use a high um, the higher time frames because on the smaller time frame divergence does get too messy. Although the market is fractal and it will work in every single time frame, you can um, use the smaller time frames um, to find them setups. But it will be 
like you'll have a lot less risk to reward ratio. Is all the blood the same as a few candle? Sort of. Can this be applied to any time frame? I literally just explained that. How do you know which pair to trade? You find out which ones correlate, which ones um, negatively correlate, and you find the divergence. Yeah. So, for example, GU and EU, they correlate the Dixie and Euro USD. They negatively correlate. So you, you can basically use that for, for negative divergence. So when they are going the same way, that's when you know they're diverging. How do you, how do you determine your stop loss? For example, your entry is right below IPA. Okay, so if I'm entering off IPA, then my stop loss would be above that IPA. But if I'm entering basically mm -hmm. from a from an order block or from a supply demand zone, then my stop loss would be right above that or below that. Because if it goes above my stop loss, then that point of interest is violated. Yeah? So if it hits my stop loss, that point of interest which I was using then got violated. Understood? So then I may look for the imbalance fill and this order block up here. If that gets violated, then I know that price is bullish. Trade house elite, yeah. Who that? Oh, the second entry. Um, I basically explained the second entry down here. It broke structure. It came down and it came back to this little order block. Yeah, the, there was a pullback from the banks and institutions in this area. So that is to, to determine that as an order block. You you can use that for your entry. Your stop loss right right above the wick of it. Yeah. So um, that's basically EU and GU that I want that I wanted to go over real quick. Now, let me get another example from basically gold and silver. XAUUSD, and I want to compare it with ice. All right, so once again, we start off with the line chart so that it's easier to find divergence. It's a lot easier to find divergence with the line chart. Basically, you find a set of two highs and two lows. All right, perfect. We found one right here. So we got two highs over here. Vertical line up here, vertical line up here. Vertical line down here, vertical line down here. Now, what you can see that price is doing on gold, price is moving up. On silver, price is moving down. So what does that mean? Price is diverging. What does that mean? That we're about to see a massive move. And that's when gold dropped a good how many pips? Well, that broke my calculator. I don't know how many pips that is. That's how big it dropped. Silver as well dropped big. Yeah. When divergence takes place, you'll see a big drop incoming. Where you see a big drop, most likely divergence took place. Yeah. Reverse psychology, wherever you see a big drop, you'll, you'll most likely see divergence right before it. I mean, a big drop or a big um, rise, you'll most likely see divergence before it. Now, um, let me just zoom out a little bit to see. Yeah, right here, you see a, a big rally up. And what you can see is that if you mark up that low over here, and you mark up that low over here, you mark up the previous low, And down here as well, you can see that pr that price on gold is about equal, yeah. And price on silver had a massive bump. So what that shows is price is diver. Um, it's it's sort of there's two different terms that you can use: converging and diverging. Some people say that converging is when one is flat and the other one goes up or down, um, but Basically, what converging seems to me, what diverging is, is that when price is moving up, the oscillator is moving down, and converging is when the price is moving down and the oscillator is moving up, so that these lines, they converge towards each other. But let's say that this is convergence, yeah? When, you're, when, when price is flat and, um, and what you're comparing it to is dropping, that's basically convergence, let's just say, then price has a big rally up on both of them. 
So then again, you can use the same concepts that you've been taught throughout this boot camp, the same smart money concepts you can use to find an entry. Divergence is like just a confirmation to tell you that price is about to have a big move. But that's not what you find your entry based on. You find your entry based on smart money concepts, based off institutional concepts, yeah? So that's basically gold and silver. And what I would like to actually go over now is the quarter theory. So let me go back to Euro USD because I actually had an example of that with that divergence. Um, wait, where, where was that divergence once again? Um, was that over here? Yeah. So basically over here we had these equal highs, price that FU'd it, and then had a retest and stuff. So what a lot of people may be thinking is that why do I have these hor this, hor this horizontal grid, um, I mean these, hor these horizontal and vertical lines on my, um, on my chart, they look very annoying. But for me, it's because they help me see where the quarter levels are. So what the quarter level theory actually is, well, I mean what the quarter theory actually is, it's basically that price is going to reverse at whole numbers. Yeah, so again, this is not a textbook de de definition, it's my own words. So I want you guys to write it down in your own words once I've explained it. So, where price would normally reverse at a whole number, or price would reverse at a half number, or price would reverse at a quarter number. And that's where you get one, and you get half, which is 0 0.5, and you get the quarters between them two, which is 0 0.25 and 0 0.75. Um, so those are basically the quarter levels. These are also psych psychological levels and institutional levels because um, the banks and institutions, they like to move the market to these levels. And I will explain why, based on my own theory, why I believe that the institutions love to move price to these areas. So you've got whole numbers, and that's like zero, one, two, three, and then you've got the halves, 0 0.5, 1.5, 2.5, and then you've got the quarters, 0 0.25, 0 0.75, 1.25, 1.75, and you can continue doing that. So, or let's say that, for example, these numbers are not even on your chart, because as you can see over here, the, right at the top, we've got 1.15, and right at the bottom, we've got 1.065. So, um, let's just say that it's between 1.0, no, let, let, let's just say that we're looking between 1.0 and um, 1.15, yeah? So the, quarter, so, so the quarter level numbers that you want to see between these two areas are, of course, 1.0, then you've got 1.10, and you've also got 1.150. Now, the quarter level numbers between here you'd get are... 1.050 so like the more zeros you get the stronger it's uh, the stronger quarter level it is yeah the more zeros you get at the end the stronger quarter level it is and the ones between them are weaker and if you want to learn more about quarter levels go to um just go to go live go to mike miles and in his favorite session he teaches these concepts really well so um you've also got 1.025 and you've got 1.075 and then you've got 1.1 yeah so these are the sort of quarter level numbers wait my bad so these are the sort of court the um, quarter level numbers that come between one between 1 1.0 and 1.15 yeah you can also break down even on the smaller time frames you can find quarter levels Within a much smaller, um, within a much smaller area. So for so for example, the quarter levels between 1.1 and 1.125, there'll also be quarter levels between them. Yeah. So um, to learn more about this, once again, we refer back to Mike Miles' session under his favorite sessions. You'll see that there um, that he's got a whole video on the on the quarter theory, so you can learn this all from him. Now, let me give you live examples so that you can understand it better and why price actually moves towards it in my opinion. So let me convert this to candles. So as you can see, 
quarter levels are basically where you get a lot of zeros at the end. So 1.125, 1.2, and basically all these numbers, you'll see a lot of resistance and support in that area. Now, I'm not talking about retail support resistance. I'm talking about actual um, rejections and price reversals. Yeah. So the reason why price literally Look, I just want you guys to see this as a little example. I I explained 1.125 is a strong quarter level, yeah? Oh, where's it gone? All right, yeah, perfect. So 1.125 is a strong quarter level. And as you can see, price literally tapped it. It just tapped it on the dot and dropped price just tapped it obviously you use your other confirmations as well but a quarter level is such a strong confirmation now let's go back to where i was looking at before 1.12 it just tapped it and dropped there's so many zeros at the end there's three zeros that just shows how powerful of a quarter level is just touches it and drops obviously it cleared out these equal highs as well and it came back to to um, test this order book and whatnot so that just comes to show that it's an extra confirm that it's an extra confirmation yeah. Also, within this drop, um, within this sort of um, sort of supply zone, within this order block, we saw that we had a quarter level area here, which is a 1.12. That's extra confirmation. 1.124. Look how close it came to it and dropped big. Now, people may ask, why did it come so close to it? If someone had a pending order there, would it have activated? Yes or no? It wouldn't have activated. But if someone had the stop loss there, would that have been hit? Yes or no? Yes, it would have been hit. Why? Because of spread. So banks don't need to push money up extra to take out someone who's got the stop loss there. Now, why would people have the stop loss at 1.124 out of all places? The reason is because when you enter a trade and you put in a stop loss, let's say, especially if you're a retail trader and you're in a hurry, your stop loss will most likely be a whole number. You're, you're actually even taught this in Retail Basics 101. Put your stop loss at a whole number. Put your stop loss with zeros at the end. Like, not literally, they, they don't say to you, put zeros at the end of your stop loss. It's just like something that you'd actually do, yeah? It's like when you enter a trade and you want to put a stop loss, you'll just round it up or round it down. Tell me if this has happened with you guys. Just type it in the chat box. That you have entered a trade, you have typed up, yeah, just open up the chat box, please, for him that you have entered in a stop loss, that you have entered in a stop loss, you rounded it up or down, and price literally just taps it and reverses. How have your grid mapped out exactly at quarter levels? When you come to the settings, um, you've got your horizontal grid lines and your vertical grid lines, that basically just comes on, on the whole numbers anyways. But Mike Miles will teach you exactly how to pull it on um, as at the right quarter levels as well. So basically, yeah, a lot of people are typing yes in, in the in the chat box because it happens with everyone. It's only natural. This is something that I used to do myself as well. That when I enter trades, I'd put my stop loss, I'll just round it up or round it down. Because who cares? It's just a few pivots. But literally, when it hits, it touches perfectly on point and then drops. Or it goes in profit. Well, it goes in the direction that you expected it, or you get FU'd first. Yeah, and that's and the banks know this. That's why they move price to these psychological levels. But why use those extra millions of dollars, millions of pounds to push price up another pip? Just spread takes it out and it drops. Yeah, that's what happens. So John Dolly teaches court, the court theory as well. Perfect. Just go on there and learn it from him. Yeah. So. That's basically what the quarter theory is all about. Um, you, you'll see it again and again that where these quarter levels are, you'll see a lot of price re rejections and reversals. Right over here, it just came, tapped this. It, it also came into a little supply zone, tapped it and dropped. Yeah. So you'll see this over and over again. Right here, it literally missed. It missed that quarter level. Why? Because spread would have taken it out. Spread would have, would have taken out people's stop losses. But if someone had a pending order there, it wouldn't have activated. 
for example, if there was some certain strategy that people were using, for example, the teacup strategy or something, I'm not saying anything bad about the teacup strategy, but let's say if they were using the teacup strategy, the teacup strategy, their pending order would have been at 1.124. Why? Because it's a whole number. It makes sense. To them, it makes sense, but to us, it doesn't because the banks are going to target that with spreads to take out the stop losses, but not enough to activate pending orders. I hope that makes sense. I hope that explains the court of view to you guys. Um, from my perspective, that's not something that I've learned from the how from the how the trade force anything. The theory of why it's targeted, um, but I hope that does make sense to everyone. Um, I'll go over questions real quick over the next two three minutes. So for anyone who's got any sort of questions, I'll go over them here. Well, I don't think I've explained it so perfectly that no one's got questions. I have a fair of phone numbers. <laughs> now use them to your advantage, bro. You use them to your advantage to know where to enter, to know where the retail traders are going to get FU'd. And that basically tells you where to enter yourself. So since someone mentioned my Instagram, guys, um, my Instagram is at MK Trades. My Telegram is at Muhammad K786. For those of you who've got questions, feel free to hit me up if you want to mention me in the story. If you gain value, feel free to do that. My Discord is at Mr. Pips hash 0777. So for anyone who's got questions, hit me up on any platform. Hopefully I'll answer them for you. If I don't know the answer, I'll learn from you and I'll refer you to hopefully the right source. Now, um, this was basically something that I had marked up on the New York session last time. Look, once again, over here, it literally tapped that quarter level, tapped that horizontal line 1.135, yeah, and dropped. 1.135 and dropped. You'll see it again and again. Now that I've mentioned it, you'll see it again and again. The price will, re will reverse at these horizontal grid lines. Yeah. Right over here, it tapped it, rejected off it, came back, retested it, dropped. You'll see it again and again. Now for EU, the only reason I'm bringing that up once again is because I did actually call out this buy on the last New York session. Um, actually about two days ago or something. When was it? Um, basically, when, when price was up here or something, I called out this buy. Literally activated. For those of you who are in it from that New York session, just um, enjoy your profits. Hopefully, move move your stop loss to break even already because it was a beautiful snipe. And guys, without further ado, I'd like to pass it back to Farhan to end it off once again. And I'll see you guys all on the boot camp call tomorrow. There's only one person left out of the four organizations what's the spread um if you want to learn about spread you can see um you can go back to the academy and they teach it in um, on there so that's what spreads all about so guys i hope everyone enjoyed the session i hope everyone gained value i'll see you all on the call tomorrow because that's going to be a complete shutdown but thank you so much for this opportunity and i'll pass it back to you for one yo 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 um can everyone hear me I'm just making sure because my Zoom has frozen. Everyone can hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Guys, that wraps up uh, day three. Um, I don't know about you, but I took hella notes. Hella notes. Um, Mohammed, bro, thank you for that. Um, Mr. Still Your Poops. Um, appreciate it, bro. Um, so that concludes day three. Day one, we covered the basics. As I mentioned, day two, went into a bit more advanced stuff. Now day three, Mohammed ended up with divergence. Um, and how it can apply to institutional trading and a lot more. Guys, I don't know about you, but I know this has leveled me up massively. Um, I'm excited for tomorrow and Friday. Um, tomorrow is about to be very, very interesting. Let's just put it that way. Friday is about to be even more interesting as well. But guys, I appreciate you taking the time out jumping on. I know everyone's probably been busy. It's been a beautiful day, but I'll see you all tomorrow. Um, same time, 10 o'clock. Um, yeah, I'll see you all tomorrow, guys. Take care.